so uh good afternoon everyone so this particular session is on course portfolio and this is course portfolio as a learner you will all do course portfolio as a student or as a learner so let's see what is meant by a course portfolio for a learner so as per the definition it is an organized presentation of a student's education throughout the course it displays coursework samples that is assignments mini projects reflections etc it is also a synthesis of what they learnt from the course so as you can see look at the underlined words organized presentation coursework samples so which means that as a student for a course it represents what you learnt in terms of artifacts that means as assignments or mini projects that you have done in that particular course in an organized way so a portfolio is a page uh, which gives everything in a snapshot so why is course portfolio useful for a teacher it is useful because it gives an organized collection of what happened in the course and it also displays coursework artifacts the various artifacts that came out of the course in terms of assignments mini projects and reflection sheets etc it also can be used as a summative tool a summative assessment tool of students understanding and knowledge we'll see how we are going to use a course portfolio in this particular course of pedagogy workshop uh using some of the tools that you have already learnt so before that let us look at some portfolio examples so if you go to this particular site you will see a collection of uh teaching portfolios created by student teachers student teachers as in pre service teachers so uh it is just like a bed course or uh, teachers who are part of a bed course or some training program who have undergone some kind of coursework on uh, teaching practices they have uploaded their uh, portfolios in various forms uh what we are going to do see is how we are going to do an organized presentation of what you learnt that means you show whatever you have done within the workshop through something known as a course portfolio course student portfolio and for teachers that is us it is a summative assessment of what you have learnt throughout the workshop so we were at this particular slide where i was showing you some sample uh, teaching portfolios so i'll just show you this uh, so this is a mcgill university web page so there are several teaching portfolios that are already given so as a teacher what you so this is one of such portfolios it is created in a blog you can see there is a home page which has a nice picture of her class uh some information about her then about me so you, there are files given in the uh page you can click them to get it most importantly look at these sample works so she has posted videos documents that she has already created for various topics so if as a another teacher who are who is teaching the same course all you have to do is just look at this videos and the documents to understand what kind of work has been done by this particular teacher and she has also shared experience her uh, philosophy my approach in teaching some other components classroom environment all these things so this is what she has done in a blog so blog is one tool through which you can create your own portfolio uh this is for you but what we are more concentrated over here is how we can create a course portfolio for uh, what you learnt in this workshop 
So let's look back at what you have learned in this workshop. You have learned how to articulate learning objectives for your course. You have explored ICT tools appropriate for some of these objectives. You have learned effective pedagogical strategies for teaching with ICT tools. And what you have also seen is apply above strategies to design materials and activities for your course. So what should come in your course portfolio? So if you look at a pedagogy workshop course portfolio of you as a participant, what you should have is assignments. This assignment that is create your own question paper. Why? It demonstrates higher order assessment questions aligned to learning objective. Then it should contain an example of either a PI or TPS strategy. Why? It demonstrates your grip on use of active learning strategy for higher order teaching learning. And it also should contain a complete lesson plan having learning objectives aligned to the instructional strategies aligned to the assessment. This gives you integration of what you have learnt throughout the workshop. So a typical lesson plan, if you remember the uh, pre-workshop assignment, we had asked you to create a lesson plan for a class of uh, one hour, 50 minutes to one hour. So your lesson plan can be as long as one hour or it can be it, minimum it should have nearly 20 to 25 minutes of instruction. So what should come in your portfolio if you look at it? the assignments and the examples of PI or TPS strategy, you have already done this part as assignments. So the question paper you are having with yourself and the PI and TPS strategy you have, it's only converting it into a web format or putting it in a place where it can be accessed by others. What you will have to do is a complete lesson plan having the integration of all three modules and you will be able to do this. So supposing that you have done these two assignments, it is only a matter of integrating them carefully. So you will be able to do this in the coming days. And what would give it a more value? So if you happen to see the web page, uh, the teaching portfolio, see this particular section this is the online portfolio it says my approach in teaching so it is a reflection of what she has her philosophy she has shared her experience through images so what would add more weight is your reflection about learning in this workshop so what do you mean by reflection so reflection means it is not feedback telling that I learned learning objectives I learned instructional strategy of PI and TPS. No, it is not that. Reflection is a learning summarized by you for your own future use. Some typical examples. So the reflection that I will use peer instruction in a particular topic because that topic needs some conceptual understanding by the students before proceeding to some activity. So this is the reflection that you have understood why you want to use peer instruction, you know where you are going to use peer instruction and uh, specifically for the topic why you are using peer instruction. Similarly, look at this example. I can use flip classroom for some portion of my lecture on the topic so and so because one of the reason may be that there is more of information transfer in that particular topic which can be done outside the classroom uh, or any other reason where students would have already been familiar with this. So these are typical strategies, uh, typical reflection points that you have to write. So some typical examples of reflection statements have been given over here and how you are going to do this is using wikis. So you already saw an example of a blog being used for course portfolio. Now you have done enough activity. So you have enough exposure with wikis to create a course portfolio for yourself in the wiki for trial 
wiki that we are already having and most of you have already joined. So, let us see why we are using wiki. So, we already told you before selecting a particular tool, you have to map its pedagogical purpose with the learning objective and you have to map the specific features in the tool that you want to use for that particular purpose and objective. Now, let us look at the learning objective of why you need a course portfolio. So, participants at the end of the workshop need to specify higher order learning objectives. So, this is a learning objective of the workshop. Next is they have to devise appropriate active learning strategies and they have to assess the learning objectives. So, for this the pedagogical purpose is that they have to create individual artifacts. Artifacts means individual uh, worksheets or individual pages which contains all these. And another pedagogical purpose is they should reflect on their learning. So, how to use wiki? You can do this by creating a new page in wiki. You can use the basic write functionality or the edit functionality in wiki to create a new page having all these informations. The learning objective was participants need to showcase their learning from the course. The pedagogical purpose, participants need to organize the various artifacts. And you can use the link functionality in the edit feature. So, yesterday I showed you how to select a particular text and create links to other pages or other web pages. So, the same functionality of the wiki can be used for achieving this learning objective for this pedagogical purpose. And one more greater pedagogical purpose is that we need all of you to collaborate. So, the learning objective why uh, the learning objective for this is participants require feedback about their individual artifacts or individual assignments uh, or uh, learning objectives, questions. You need to get individual feedbacks from other participants. So, what feature of wiki gives you this option? It is the discussion feature. So, there is a button called discussion where you can actually post comments. So, I know that the next follow up is the assignment. So, this is a wiki assignment. You have to create a course portfolio in wiki for trial wiki. How? Create individual pages in the wiki for your question paper assignment, your own PI or TPS assignment and your lesson plan. You can then collate all three of these in your own page by giving links. Remember the page created in uh, task 1. So, you had an RC ID followed by your name. So, that is your profile page in wiki for trial. So, you can collate all the three pages that you create in this particular uh, profile page of yours and make it your course portfolio. And something that is desirable is put in what you learnt, reflect on what you learnt and put this at the end of the page. And you have to use the guidelines of specific statements like these when you are talking about reflection. Uh, some helpful instructions on how to do this, follow a standard naming convention when you create uh, your own uh, pages. So, for example, if you create a question paper assignment. Uh, you upload, uh, you copy the text of question paper assignment, you can name the pages your RC ID followed by your name followed by uh, the word Q paper, it means the question paper assignment. For page on PI or TPS, what you can do is RC ID followed by your name followed by PI or TPS whichever you are creating and for page on lesson plan, what you can do is RC ID your name followed by lesson plan. So, till now you saw the various instructions on how to do the course portfolio for uh, yourself. Now, what I am going to show you is an actual implementation. The screen is shared already. So, in the screen I will move slowly 
and show you how you can do all three activities within wiki. So, assuming that me uh, Jay Krishnan is from RC0001 and I need to create my portfolio. So, how will I go about it following these specific instructions? Create individual pages for question paper assignment, your own PI or TPS assignment, lesson plan and collating all three in a single page. So, let us go to our wiki, wiki for trial, I have logged in as uh, with my username. So, what I am going to do is RC0001, I am going to create the, I am going to go to my page. So, what I am doing right now is I am typing my home page. So, how did I do that? Yesterday, if you remember while we were doing the wiki activity, I had created this page RC0001 Jay Krishnan, which is a page for myself. So, I just add this at the end of the wiki for trial uh, website address. So, this directly provides me access to my own page. So, I hope all RCs are seeing this particular interaction. So, the desktop is already shared. So, process number one is I go to website and directly give my page address. I have already signed in. I just give my page address to go to my page. Now, what I do next is I just press edit. So, there are three things that are going to come. So, first is my question paper assignment. my peer instruction assignment and finally, my lesson plan. So, I am just typing these in my home page. So, this is my home page. I am saving it. I will create these individual pages now and finally, link those pages to my home page. So, this is my portfolio. So, you can see it has my name the domain I am coming from, the college, the courses that I am teaching, a link to the video and in addition I have my question paper assignment, peer instruction assignment and my lesson plan already put inside the wiki page. Now, the next instruction is, I have to create individual pages in wiki for question paper assignment, PI or TPS assignment and lesson plan. So, let us move to pages, I am creating a new page and already I gave you a simple nomenclature that you can follow for naming the pages. So, it makes accessing those pages via www easier. So, I am from RCID 0001, my name is Jay Krishnan. And this is my question paper assignment. So, I will say this is for portfolio. I am giving tags which makes searching also easier. Q paper. So, these two tags also will make uh, searching this page easier. So, I have a page called RC0001 Jayakrishnan underscore Q paper. Okay. I uh, will repeat it for a new page. So, I am just writing this page will contain my question paper assignment.
and this page will be updated. So there is a RCID, my name followed by question paper assignment. So what I am going to do now is repeat the same process for my PI or TPS. So I will select a TPS activity, I will create a page for my own TPS. So it is, I click on the pages, write my name and instead of Q paper, I am going to write TPS. Again, this is for portfolio and the tag is TPS. So the process is click on the page, create page, give the name, follow the naming convention so that it will be easier. And if you want to add tags, you can add tags and finally click create. And this is where you type in, type in your TPS strategy. So while you are uh, doing the TPS strategy, follow the same format that you had in the TPS constructor. So course, first of all domain, course, topic followed by think face activity pair face activity followed by share face activity so this over here you explain all the think, pair and share uh, activities that you have designed for your TPS, specify the times, uh, the time uh, that you take for each activity and you just click save. So this creates a TPS page, uh, this page reflects my TPS strategy. Once I fill the details, it shows me the TPS activity that I have designed. And again for lesson plan, so please be careful while you are uh, doing the lesson plan. So what I am going to do is, I am going to uh, create a template that others can also use. So you can follow the same procedure while you are uh, writing your lesson plan. So again RCID and instead of TPS, it is a lesson plan. So while you are creating a lesson plan, the important details that you require are the course, the topic and duration of the lesson. So it may be typically 20 minutes, so a preferred duration of the lesson plan should be around 20 to 30 minutes. And what do you start your lesson plan with? Learning objectives for the lesson. And then in the instructional strategy, what you have to specify is what you are going to do as a teacher, what your students are going to do and if supposing you are using some technology, what technology is going to do or what technology is specifically used for. It would be a good idea, so uh, supposing you say that I am going to do think pair share, in a lesson plan spell out in, uh, in detail what you will do in each phase and uh, correspondingly what your students are going to do in each phase. So for example, in think phase, I am going to post this questions, students, what the students are going to do are they are going to individually think about the question and write their answer in their notebooks. 
in pair phase i'll make them uh, group together in pairs and ask the next question or the put up the pair phase question and you have to specify what the students will be doing and in each phase supposing you have used some technology make sure that what technology is going to uh, do in each of the think pair and pair, uh, share phase so in a lesson plan uh, what you should do is you should not detail out the content so supposing for example uh, you are taking a topic on uh, let's say uh, computer programming you should not detail too much about the content but rather you should say the mode of uh, so what you are going to do so let's say for explaining content so i'll just write an example for explaining content i will show them my ppt which has slides relevant to topic and what your students are going to do they are going to view the ppt and uh, listen to the lecture that you are uh, delivering on the particular content technology ppt is used for demo or showing the content so technology used is ppt is used for demonstration and once you have explained the instructional strategy at the end of the lesson how you are going to evaluate the assessment strategy so sub, are you going to pose a question are you going to give them assignment which you are going to evaluate at the end of the class or maybe a day later so that particular assessment strategy has to be specified so uh, let's say in this particular example i give them a uh, take home quiz on contents that i taught today at maybe uh, an apply level in bloom's taxonomy that is a good description of assessment strategy in a lesson plan so you don't have to detail the exact questions what you have to say is what you are going to do so all of you can look at the pages that i have already created because these are sample templates uh, for you to use for your own uh lesson plan or uh, your own portfolios now i go back to my original home page so uh, i am back to my profile page or this is my course portfolio page what i am going to do now he is i am going to link all the pages that i have already created to this particular portfolio page so i am going to select this particular text and i am going to click the link and okay i'll i'll use the web addresses directly so what i am going to do now is copy this particular web address and i'll just paste it over here so what has happened is the question paper assignment has directly linked to my the uh, question paper assignment page that i have already created so similarly i'll do the same for uh, my so i did a tps assignment select the link so in the address i'll specify tps and my lesson plan will have use the web address and once you submit it if you have some reflections please make sure you note it beneath it so i will use pi for so this is your reflection and this is a simple course portfolio for you as a participant teacher in the pedagogy workshop and you can see all these are linked to pages 
So, for example, if I click the lesson plan, you can see the lesson plan page that I had already created. Uh, so, at this moment, we, you are all going to go to your lab and do this particular assignment of course portfolio creation and uh, you will be assembling back at 5 pm for uh, Q and A. So, for, uh, people who are having queries just go and visit the particular page that I have created. I will post the link of my uh, portfolio page for uh, which will act as a template for all of you. So, that is it from uh, on this session. You can now go to your lab and start working on your course portfolio.